Ukrainian prisoners of war in Donetsk, President Zelensky says that all residents should leave the region. Many people refuse to leave. The decision to leave should be taken at some point. The more people leave the Donetsk region now, the fewer people the Russian army will kill. We'll speak to President Biden's envoy to the Horn of Africa about bringing peace to Ethiopia and battling perceptions of Russian influence in the region. And as England take on Germany in the women's Euros final, we'll discuss how the public's view of women's soccer has evolved. Now we're talking about the football, and when you're hearing people in the streets talking about it, it's not, it's women's football, it's just football. All of that coming up after the news. BBC News. Hello, this is Jerry Smith. Russian shelling has killed a grain tycoon who was one of Ukraine's richest people. Alexei Vadotorsky died along with his wife when a missile hit their home in the southern city of Mykolaiv. He owned the Nibulon Group, which, was built, which has built key infrastructure for grain exports. Andrew Harding reports. The explosions began soon after midnight and continued well beyond dawn. Rockets and missiles damaged two schools, a hotel and many other buildings, triggering fires and leaving giant craters in residential neighborhoods. One of Ukraine's richest men, a grain exporter, was killed with his wife at their riverside mansion. Mykolaiv is a key strategic city, currently blocking Russia's advance west along the Black Sea coast. In recent days, Ukraine has been targeting key bridges in nearby Russian occupied territory, as both armies appear to be gearing up for much heavier fighting. Russia says it's invited experts from the United Nations and the Red Cross to investigate the deaths of more than 50 Ukrainian prisoners of war in the occupied part of Donetsk. Ukraine has already called for both organizations to look into the killings in Olenivka prison on Friday. Kiev and Moscow blame each other for the deaths. The authorities in Madagascar say a criminal gang has killed at least 32 people after setting fire to their homes. The attack on Friday was in a village north of the capital, Antananarivo. Here's Will Ross. Photos from the village show homes that have been burnt to the ground with just parts of the walls still standing. Madagascar's military is using helicopters to search for the criminal gang that forced men, women and children into the thatched homes before setting them ablaze. The authorities say the attack was carried out by a cattle rustling gang known locally as Dahalo. Cattle theft and the efforts to stop it have led to extremely violent confrontations in recent years. The defence minister thinks the rural community was targeted for providing information to officials during a previous security operation. Voting is underway in Senegal, where the opposition is hoping that the current anger over economic hardship will help it wrestle seats from the governing coalition. Before the polls, there were protests after the opposition coalition's primary list of candidates was disqualified on technical grounds. Correspondents say the political scene in Senegal is increasingly tense, partly due to President Macky Sall's refusal to rule out running for a controversial third term in 2024. Hundreds of followers of the powerful Iraqi Shiite cleric, Muqtada al-Sada, are continuing their sit-in protest in the country's parliament. They stormed the building on Saturday for the second time in three days. BBC News.